This is up front a video directly for my viewers. Uh, this content is made directly because a viewer requested this content. Uh, and I'm making it very specifically as a shout out here to Skeleton Master Killer. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, literally making this video here on your behalf. Uh, and then for the other user for their specific request, they had asked me to uh, essentially utilize DS. Pi, uh, the framework put out by Stanford, in order to uh, explain and go through the think thought tokens that are utilized within the deep seek model for reinforcement learning. So that's what we'll do today. And uh, going over briefly the DSPI framework, this is a really cool framework. Um, just playing around with it, it's got 21.5k uh, stars, so a ton of stars. Uh, and then essentially what it allows you to do is very straightforward. It's a framework for programming rather than prompting large language models. It allows you to iterate fast on building modular AI systems and offers algorithms for optimizing their prompts and weights, whether you're building simple classifiers, sophisticated rag pipelines, or agent loops. Kind of the bottom line is, is that uh, I look at it so uh, LM models need to be controlled, and they're controlled by a prompt, and that's exactly how you, you like you start them, right? <laughs> it's, it, it's like um, if we're in the age of uh, like early mechanics, we're like in in like crank mechanics, right? Like you have to like crank the car, you have to crank the engine, uh, and then so you have to crank the LM model, and that's like a prompt is like a cranking the LM model, right? And then this DSPI framework is a more sophisticated crank. It's it's like um the first uh, like internal combustion engine. <laughs> it allows the model to to crank itself. Uh, you define some aspects of the initial crank. So there is a like it's still we're still like in the very early phases, right? But this is like a what this framework is is very specifically designed around. And, and how it works, right? And then, so if you go to dspy.ai, they give you lots of tutorials, full walkthroughs, et cetera, right? So I went through all of this, uh, kind of understood the framework, how you build out the modules, et cetera. Uh, and then that's why I went through uh, and then kind of trained myself on it. <laughs> and then I built out uh, what we have here uh, and what we're gonna look at here, which is this collab notebook, which is LLM reinforcement learning with think tokens using DSPy. As far as a step-by-step -step explanation of what we're looking at within this notebook, first of all, we're importing a few different libraries. First one, of course, being DSPy. <laughs> so that's the one that I have to directly import uh, within Google Colab. Everything else, all these other libraries are default within Google Colab. So if you're running these within Colab, you don't have to install them. But if you're running this outside of Colab, you'd have to uh, install these packages if you don't already have them. Uh, from there, I'm utilizing my data, just you know, my uh, one of my data sets, which is the PFAF 750 data set. And then very specifically, I'm utilizing the small LM2 360M uh, model in this framework. So uh, first of all, like I'm pretty sure that there's uh, like compatibility issues with this model uh, and this framework, but it, it, it like it works. <laughs> it's working overall. I'll show you it's working in my demo. Uh, but like uh, you would want to change this. I'm assuming like. Uh, I'm assuming, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like screwed with Duck, right? I think that, like, if I run this, like, if I just ran it for, like, a few minutes, it's going to charge me, like, 10 bucks, I think, like, maybe. So, like, I just, like, I don't know. I was like, I, I'm going to be careful if I, like, running this. Uh, I'm just going to, like, build the code out for a small LM so I can run it for free, um, and then I'll build it out from there, right? So the code I'm giving you here is specifically for small LM, and I'll explain that out when we get to the code. Uh, what you I would probably change within this, Within that, I have to do. I have to have a wrapper, right? So I'm I'm doing this um, wrapper again. Like I'm not like the DSPI framework doesn't directly support this model. So I'm I'm doing some wrappering here, and it all works. Right? So so um, they just giving you like so you have a wrapper here for that as well. And then uh, essentially, like the bottom, like I need the model in this instance, we're doing a reinforcement learning loop, right? The model is uh, prompting itself and, and it's training itself. And the bottom line of what we're flat out trying to do within this loop is uh, trying to train the model to think, right? To, to utilize a thought process. And then so in this instance, we're utilizing think tokens. So th like uh, begin, think, and think. Uh, and then uh, begin answer and answer is kind of like how the model should respond. So it's, so it's it's think about it, 
and your thinking, begin your answer and your answer, right? So you're, you're giving it a chain of thought <laughs> directly and you're, you're uh, we're, um, directly training the model on that chain of thought process, on that reasoning process, like here's how you reason uh, via this reinforcement learning method and then on this particular data set. Just uh, so from there, we have the forward pass of this, right? So um, this is a, essentially what we do is we do a forward pass. It's kind of like how this framework works overall. Right? And then why, like in this instance, like why I think like backpropagation is really cool within this, right? So it's, it's you have the forward pass and then you have the backward pass. So the forward pass is like the model passes it over and then the, the model computes a score based off of this, and the model is computing its own score, right? Uh, and it's computing the score based off of the accuracy uh, and as well as format in this instance. So I'm recreating the uh, structure of the reward structure that is uh, in the DeepSeq RL, uh, R1 paper in this particular instance, where they give you the two different reward models, both the uh, accuracy and the structure reward. So I have that as the combined reward here. And then whatever that score is, that's what you back propagate and you back pass over the weights, right? And then so I like, I mean, a lot of people again they, they knock back propagation, but like I would take this in a second. <laughs> like, like I would love to have a feature like this in my brain where I could just turn it on and off, where it's like, uh, you got the you got the answer wrong on this test, back propagate the right answer, and then you'd never have to study again, right? It's just uh like you study one time for a test, okay, here's all you got. 30% wrong, like, you know, here you got 70% on the test, back propagate, and next time you get 100%. And like, who would not want that, right? Um, and then so from there, we just uh, fine tune the model. Uh, prepare the data set. So in this instance, right, this is, I want to highlight within this, and I'll, I'll highlight this further in the code. I'm not doing a lot of preparation on this data set. I'm not vectorizing it. I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I'm normalizing it <laughs> is really what I'm doing, like stripping out special characters, uh, making sure that's all lowercase for the model, et cetera, right? The model is doing a, a lot of work within this, and it's because of the DSPy framework. Like the model is vectorizing it, et cetera, right? Uh, and then we have this, this setting up this teleprompter. And then again, I'm just, uh, I'm just doing, I'm calling the module in this instance, and then this DSPy framework is doing the instance of what this teleprompter does, which is, it's like the teleprompter is, is like the teacher, right? Like, like here's here's your prompts for the model. It, it's instructing the model, and it's also the judge, right? And then so, but it's all wrapped within the model itself, and that's the cool part within this, right? I see a lot of people, and I'll highlight this. Like, I see in, in even in uh, very big and large institutions, right, where they are. Uh, they realize that you need an uh, like an external judge for these things, right? Like you need okay, my model, but I need another judge model, right? Like you don't need another model to be your judge, and, and especially if you're dealing with large enough models. I'm not in this instance, right? In this example, I'm dealing with small alums because I'm, I'm screwed up duck. But in a typical example where you're running this, you're dealing with like a pretty large model, I would assume. Like why would you need two instances of GPT four or four O, right? Just Run one one instance, and then it's the same thing, right? Have the model is itself both the judge and the student. The model could be multiple different things, right? You break the model into multiple different personalities all the time. Like that's kind of how they're designed, right? So just uh, the model. While you sh you do need uh, a judge model and a student model, there's no reason why the judge model and the student model can't be the same model, and then so. We then run the experiment overall, uh, which is essentially just doing this, uh, like this whole reinforcement learning process, uh, and then uh, utilizing that reward function and that that combined reward uh, within this DSPy framework. I'll outline it again in the code that there is like some simplification within this. Like this, this DSPy framework overall is very cool, right? It's what it does is it's um, extends promptability and it's. Um, allows you to do that in a way that would be very easy if you are not a coder. <laughs> and like that's the bottom line here, right? Um, and then so this first test, I'm like, there's two tests in here. I'm leaving you the two tests, right? So you can see my thought process and, and, and kind of how I went through here. So this first one is my, my first attempt, right? Like I wanted like, does this work? Like, can I actually do this? Uh, like, um, can I get a, a, working MVP of some sorts. It's kind of like my first thought when I, I do these things, right? So at this point, I've read the tutorial, I've slept on it at this point. I think I understand it, like I've, I've gone through, I've given myself like a few days of like, you know, this churning around in my mind, 
let me build out my first iteration. Here it is. Uh, does it work? Uh, and then in this instance, at the end result is uh, we get exactly what I was expecting, right? An MVP. Uh, and we'll show you. I'll show you. So essentially, we've got, again, all these libraries. And then so literally all of these are, are just a part of Colab except for this one, right? So uh, in Colab, all I have to do is import this. But outside of Colab, you'd, you'd, you'd need all these. And then so... Uh, next one is uh, device setup. I, I'm running this all just flat out on CPU. Again, like I, I'm screwed with ducks. So I'm not even dealing with GPU if I don't have to in a lot of instances. Loading my data set. I'm loading my own data set. <laughs> Again, just, you know, uh, highlighting. And then uh, going to the uh, create the train test split. So, that, like, I'm just, like, so this is where I'm just uh, um doing and, and creating the, the data set, right? And then so in a normal instance, I'd be having to do a lot more within this. But you can see I'm just doing like, I'm just calling this like a train data list and then a train data to pandas function and then to this dictionaries function. I'm pulling all these dictionaries functions from this DSPy mo like module, right? Like I'm doing like this DSPy is saving a ton of work here. <laughs> That's why this is like so little code, for uh, the uh, like 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 uh, getting my data set together, like this is cool, and I want to highlight this, right? Because like I mean, this is my whole data set. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not doing a lot of work, which is like normally like ninety percent of my effort in this is like training the getting the data set up, <laughs> and so uh, it's I, I like. The fact that this framework is handling this, it, it should be highlighted. Uh, and then so I just do my, I have my model here, right? And then so you want to change this. I'm assuming, again, this is just a small LM model. Change it to, I'm assuming like whatever you would want, like so chat GPT. And then you will have to add like a, then your your API keys and whatever you'll need there. Um, and then so this, uh, and this pad token is very specifically for the small LM model. You might, not, I'm assuming if you're using like a good model, you won't need the pad token. Uh, highlighting that there and then I've got this uh, here for like the hugging face like like for this model specifically so if you're utilizing if you're going to make major cha major changes to the code is going to be here right on the model I'm assuming that you're going to want to use a different model and then so you're going to make major adjustments here to whatever you want to adjust for that any optimizer I'm just using Adam W the, the this package again this DSPy package comes with a multitude of optimizers that you can use. So, so just Adam W is the one I picked. Uh, and then uh, now you can see where we kind of have the soft error. So this is like that text normalization. So this is again, like more like uh, I'd be doing, like this is uh, two functions, right? Define normalized text and define is similar. So this is my first time playing around with this and then uh, wanting to know exactly how this works. Like this is uh, like, again, uh, doing a lot of work for me in one line of code as far as data cleanup, that would normally be multitudes of lines of code. So very happy for that there. Uh, and then our four pass and our backward pass, again, this would be more lines of code uh, for this, like this training function if it weren't for this DSPy. Uh, and then our fine tuning uh, function on the think tokens. So uh, again, like <laughs> all of this is very simplified. Like this is a lot of code because we're doing a lot of stuff, but I'll, I'm pulling in a lot and relying on this DSPy package for a lot of this stuff, right? Um, and then so it's doing, and it's at the end, it's combining all of this. And then so that's like um, that uh, kind of where you get into the ability to to like prompt engineer via code and and how DSPy framework is set up. That's where it gets you at the end here, right? So then at the end, we put it all together. So we prepare the data set for PSY. Uh, in this instance, I have prompt response in the data set. Uh, and then I, I create example objects using the input output fields, initialize the teleprompter, use a few examples for bootstrap, uh, bootstrap, few shot optimization. Uh, and then this is where I'm running and actually doing like the actual simulation and the think tokens and all of this instance, right? So like, in, like this, uh, yeah, right. So from here, it's like, and, and, and all of this is, is actually like super complex what's going on here. And then especially like in here, it's it's to pulling like from like libraries, right? So like this would be chunks and chunks and chunks of code and what it's actually doing in the back end. It's pulling a lot from, again, that DSPy package. And then so end result, 
we get it's uh like super cool what it is right so it, it trains and it goes through and on the epoch training and then i do get error which is fine um uh, data encoding error so i need to fix that but i can see via this error how it's encoding and, and what it's doing right so i can see it's essentially like um asking questions like so question can you create a learning path design to teach me about a website design uh, answer learning path website design step one learn the basics of html and css Sentence, the glimmering stars painted a tapestry of light across the midnight sky. So what I notice in this particular instance and in this first pass is that it's not following the um, full, uh, like, uh, like the structure, right, right, uh, up front. And then so I know that, but it's, it's doing all of these elements right. It's just like the, the error is just because of it, an encoding error with, with regards towards that logic, right? Like uh, uh, I passed it as a string when it wanted a, a bytes, uh, which is which is fine, uh, by, by it's like object. So uh, I then go through and then I, I now knowing this, I, I now like I have my MVP up here. It works. I have that small error. Now let's make like the real thing, right? I can, I can uh, take everything that I need and I can actually build it out and, and, and make it work. Um, so that's what I do. So this one is just that same thing. Just, I mean, it's, it's, it's all mo most of the same things just with a, like a little bit more of uh, enhancements, fixing it out. I have this dictionary function that I'm calling here. Like I understand now exactly uh, how to build this out, how to incorporate this. So I do a lot more work with regards towards that rewards function. I, inc I um, include a step to make sure that it's actually like, uh, for the reward function, it's it's straight up copying at this point that deep seek RN uh, reward where it's the both for structure as well as accuracy on the reward, right? And that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and then that's how I'm, I'm structuring the reward model. So I'm just like literally ripping it from deep seek R1. Uh, and then going through, uh, and then uh, here we can go see, we, we see here, and, and, and it's um, going through the, so I stopped it, right, because <laughs> it's like at a certain point, because it's going to run for uh, eight hours and 42 minutes uh, for it to, to run through and go on its own, but um, you can see here how, how it starts. So question, encapsulate symmetry properties through group actions, reasoning. Let's think step by step in order to, uh, given the field's question, produce the field's answer, follow the following format, question, reasoning. Let's step by step in order. So, and this is the first pass as it's going through, right? So this first pass and, and what we're looking at and, and, and as we're going through before I stop it, right? Uh, it's actually like, like it's doing what I want it to like, like, like what you want it to do. It's, it's, um, it's learning to reason. Like this, uh, my assumption would be that these responses will get better and better over time. And then again, like I'm like, this is a small LM, uh, three, 360 million parameter model. Like, so I'm surprised that this is taking like that. It's actually doing this and, and, and to this extent. So if it's working, um, here on our first iterations on this model, I, I, my full flat out assumption based off of this is that we would get an aha moment exactly as we see on the deep seek paper based off of what we're seeing here like it, it's it's doing it <laughs> like uh and then you can see like this this and and this output in this structure what we're seeing here is is definitively very clearly like a lot more defined and and, and a lot better than than this right like than what we're getting uh from our our initial output like from the mvp model here so we we're significantly <laughs> like um morphing the outputs and the and the training and the, the logical processing of this model and so like i mean this is like it's super cool like uh thank you for bringing this to my attention i'm glad that i i, I worked through it here you go i'll leave a link to this collab uh in the description for this video uh and then uh, thank you again um skeleton master killer <laughs> thank you very much uh if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you very much